Hey, what's up, YouTube, and uh, everyone who's watching this video, long story short. Um, obviously, if you don't know by now, I'm Micah from MCJR, more than just racing. And because um, obviously it's a lifestyle, it's a lot that goes into cars. But today, what we're going to be doing in this video, as the title would already read, is if you have the codes P0327 or P0325, this is the video for you to watch because that is your knock bank sensor um, or your knock bank sensor sub harness. So the knock bank sensor is P0325 and the knock bank sensor is uh, sub harness, which is the wire for it. There you go. Is basically, you know, popping the code for your check engine light, etc. etc. Um, and this is the same thing on uh, the G35s and the 350Zs, um, you know, basically any Nissan made vehicle, it's going to be the same thing. So long story short, um, this is the car. Well, my car, if you've never seen it. drift car like I'll, I'll say that one more time it's a drift car so you know I... well clearly my car didn't like me saying it was a drift car that many times <laughs> it was like no i'm a sports luxury car stop abusing me dog but uh yeah anyway so it's a drift car what we're gonna do is to get down to the um actual sub harness um, area, you know, to unclip it and take it off the knock bank sensor, and you know where it actually clips in to the um, to the main port to actually feed, you know, information to easy blah blah blah. Is it's actually a hole that's like directly in the middle of the engine. So you see, this middle of the engine just comes straight down, boom, and there's a hole right there, and then it runs along there all the way to the back back here and you'll actually unclip it from down at that um from down at the part take it off replace it long story short this is bank one that's bank two for your vehicle so if bank one's going off the problem's on this side if bank two is going off the problems we're gonna go ahead and take all this off and pretty much i'm gonna walk you through how to take it off and then you know stop the video show you what it looks like when it's actually taken off and you know things of that sort it's better so it's a clip there and a clip there and you just pop both those clips out this comes out if you just want to be smarter about this because this is what i do just take off the maf take off that since we're taking this whole thing off and just unbolt it from the throttle body area so just unbolt that right there and just pull this whole entire assembly out and that's basically what we're going to do and i'll show you what it looks like when it is out okay now that that bullshit is out <laughs> Uh, pretty much the next thing that we're going to move on to is taking out the plenum. Well, the upper part of the plenum is what we're going to move to uh, taking out now. And pretty much it's just bolts all around it. You see bolts. Bolt right there. Bolt right there. Bolt right there. Bolt. See? Literally just bolts all around it. And then obviously you want to take off your air hose. You want to take that off. You want to take off the hose that's connected right there. And then because the throttle body is connected to the upper part, you want to clearly unclip the throttle body. Uh, you know, from that sensor. So that's what you take off for the top. And again, let you see it when it's out. And tell you the next thing to do. So now that you've taken off the upper part of the plenum, plenum moment, uh, you want to take off the lower part. And since I'm an ass man, I'm gonna start at the bottom, you know, because I'm an ass man, dog. You know, I'm just saying that. But so to remove the outer part for it, you want to take off the bolt following that one. You want to take off this inlet. You want to take off this bolt. 
you want to take off these two bolts right here on the back side you want to take off that bolt so it's directly in line see from the front one to the back one is directly in line then you want to take off all these bolts and this is what i was saying earlier about mine's a little different because with the connects you have to cover these holes these little inlet holes that on you know um the normal setup those won't be covered but you have to cover it for the connect since it's bigger so it allows for more airflow but as you can see like it's really clean in here decently clean um even this is just a little tab of oil but it's only clean because it's oil catch can because in this engine i mean seriously oil catch can makes a huge difference because this would just be all oiled up and shit right now but um yeah just take off those bolts and uh, pull it up and obviously anything else that's holding onto it like any fasteners or clip you would take it off but it shouldn't be anything so yeah show you how it looks when it comes off too and then on to the next step so yeah this is what it's like when you take off the lower half of the plenum um if it's acting like it's stuck promise you those were all the bolts if it's acting like it's stuck just give it a little encouragement with a rubber mallet or hammer so use a rubber just tap it on you know the side or that side you know just gently and then it'll loosen it and you can just pull it right out promise so anyway um the next part is like i said the sub harness is directly under this so literally what we're gonna want to do now is take that out so that we can have access to it and a lot of people remove the fuel rails and stuff I'm not going to. What we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen the fuel rails at the bolts, right there, right there. Just to give the fuel rail a little wiggle room so it could wiggle so that you could access these bolts, bolts that are like under the fuel rail area. We're just gonna give it a little wiggle room, like I said, so that you could hit those bolts and so that you can hit those bolts, you know, to loosen them. Cause then when you loosen them, you pull the entire thing up and you know, voila, there you go. Yeah, like I said, those are the bolts, just loosen them and then hit those bolts and then take it off. And um, that's what I'm about to do, show you what it's like with it off. And so, like I said, it's just these bolts. You can see right there, that is your knock sensor. The harness that goes on to it so we're gonna replace that harness honestly I probably should replace the knock sensor because it looks pretty old but I, I didn't get the code for that I only got the code for the knock sensors harness so yeah as you can see it's really dirty in here so vacuum all this shit out and then um, I mean it's pretty straightforward from here go ahead and replace on um, the line just follow the line to where it goes and then after you go to where it goes just replace it that's it so now when you're in the back you see that little bolt that i unscrewed down there um pretty much like i said that's where the sub harness is running to and it's connected by a little connector and you'll pull on the back one it's kind of hard to explain when you go to do it you'll see what i'm talking about but you you have um your actual connection which is right there and there's a little 10 millimeter bolt you want to unscrew that so you have the connector there that's the sub harness is going to your knock sensor then you have um the part that you actually connected to that's coming through um your main harness and uh basically you just uh on the main harness it's a piece that you just pull the tab and you pull it back and then it just comes off and then like i said that 10 millimeter bolt pull it out and then get the sub harness off and place it. this is how it looks and i think it's a really dumb design because this like cups up at the top of the little bolt like i said the little bolt then this and it's just retarded because i'm like the space behind you could literally instead of doing that just have the sub wire go from there run in the same area but then be at the top so you could just unclip it you don't need any of this shit or anything because the same place that is running is the only way that you could run it either way that's it piece of shit Got me in my
and I'm out. <laughs> you guys enjoyed the video. In advance, I apologize for um, the wrong scale of the video. It's not, you know, the f covering the full um, amount of the player, and that's because I just came from Texas back to Maryland, and I haven't unpacked any of my camera stuff, like any of that. Um, it's just something I had to change and fix, so I just did that and just recorded it on my iPhone. This was a do-it-yourself video, obviously, as more people want to do it themselves. And I think sometimes people's uh, instructional videos for doing it yourself is too long or contains too much BS. But right after I'm done talking, actually, I'm going to put um, in here the steps that you have to take to reset your ECU. So you have to go crawl and search all over for the internet. It'll just be right here. So if you like the video, obviously like it, comment, subscribe, share. Tell me what you guys would like to see from the channel. Because again, it's more than just racing. It's a lot of other different things that we're um, you know, going to put out and things we're going to put out for you guys. But I want you guys to actually enjoy the channel, what you're watching. So I just want to know what you guys would actually like to see come from the channel. And um, thanks again for watching. What type of